Is that like General Tao's chicken? <laughs> I'm sorry. Cream cheese wontons. Can you cut that out actually? <laughs> Good day to you, sir. Oh, I want to die. <laughs> I've never had this sensation in my life. I got the high. I've got a high from the spice right uh -huh. now. Oh my God, you could ask me my social security. You could ask me my social insecurity. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you all the answers. I want to live in this moment forever. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> What's going on guys? Mike Chen here in San Gabriel Valley. This is one of my favorite places to go in the greater Los Angeles area because this is home. Everywhere you look, Chinese food, you want to go a little further down, you got Vietnamese food, Korean food. This just feels so comfortable being here because every morning I wake up, good food is only about a few minutes away. And today at one of my favorite places, uh, Lou's Garden. This is one of my favorite places because this is like the most comforting food you can get in the morning, I believe. But today's video is going to be a little special because we're going to a few places today and I got a special guest with me and he's coming right now. I'm coming for the first time. Yeah, you are. Yeah, I brought my own microphone even. I mic'd myself at home. Hey, hey, I'm glad you took the initiative to mic yourself at home. Yeah, absolutely. Using my mic. First of all, Sonny from Best Ever Food Review Show. If you don't know him, watch him. Link's down below. I have no idea what we're doing today. I just showed up. We're okay. shooting. Do you know about the 626? I don't know anything about California. I'm from Minnesota and I've spent maybe in my entire life 10 days in California. The 626, the area cold. So this whole area is basically a Chinese, like I said, China city, mm -hmm. if you want to call it that. But there's Korean food, there's Vietnamese food, it's like Asian central here. Yeah. This is just like limitless good eats. Today, I'm going to take you on some of my favorite places. Okay. I know you're good at eating, you know, exotic stuff. Cheese and cheese. Yeah, but are you good at eating spicy stuff? I can do it. I can. I knew. I, yeah, I knew we were doing something with spice. I can handle anything you can do. I can do. Oh wow. Okay. This is like a. Well, do you remember those commercials? Anything you can do, I can do better. Those. Those. What are, well, I think those are Burger King commercials. I'm sorry, I'm not that old, Mike. Anyway, uh, so what I like to do is feed us some good food before we explode our stomachs with the last dish. All right. First place we're going to. One of my favorite places. Yummy breakfast food. Let's go. Let's go. This is gorgeous. Yeah. So that's how this place works is that they have a pretty much like a buffet set up here. Just get whatever you want, they'll scoop it up for you. I mean, what I love about this place is like, this is like your Asian grandma's kitchen, if you had an Asian grandma. You have an Asian grandma? I do. That's what I thought, okay. I so, was adopted. Yeah. So whatever you think looks good, get it. But we have to get the tomatoes and eggs. That's 100% must get. Okay, I've never had that. Oh, this looks so good, this pork? Yeah, we're gonna get the pork. Hong Xiao Rou. One of my absolute favorite things in yes. any kind of Asian market. That is the best one. So trotters. we got that, we got trotters. What else looks good to you? What else do you want? Oh, you gotta try this. Okay, they got, okay yeah. what's that? Yeah, that is the spicy pork belly. Potatoes. Very good, yes, I think so too. You ever had jellyfish? I have. And can I tell you something? Yeah. It was awful. I did not like it, so I want to see if I like it here. Okay, she says it's good. Yeah. I think she might say that about all the food. <laughs> no, all the food here is good. I've tried pretty much all this stuff. Is that some kind of seaweed over there in the corner? Have you had seaweed? Yeah, I've had seaweed. Have you had Chinese that, seaweed? No. Let's get some Chinese seaweed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a lot of food. Hope yeah. you're hungry for breakfast. So how many meals are we having today? We're having three official meals. Three meals, and yeah. this is But one each meal. meal we're having multiple dishes. Here's what we got. Tomatoes and eggs is a Chinese staple. And then we got the trip pig trotters, the hong shao rou, pork belly and soy sauce, braised and soy sauce. We got some cold dishes here. And then kanji. I don't like in Vietnam, they have their own Plenty of kanji. Right. Yeah, I've even had kanji when I've been sick in Vietnam. And kanji there is just outstanding. I mean, I mean it's so wholesome. The kanji in China depends on where you are. So northern kanji is really kind of sweet mm. and, and soupy. So inside, I got some sweet potatoes. Here you go, bud. Thank you. Oh, what is this? Oh, there's more. Oh, food. thank you. Thank you. They just brought us an, an egg omelet dish. Thank you, Terry. I thought it was a Belgian waffle at first. <laughs> that was a, dude, nothing like, oh, here is Belgian and nothing here is a waffle. Right, the giant ceramic spoon? We don't need to use spoons for, for, for this kanji. Use, go, yeah. use your chopsticks. Uh -huh. I mean, you could use spoons, that's fine. 
but I like to just use my chopsticks. If there's one Mandarin word I learned today, it should be what this is, because I want to order this every time I come to a restaurant like this. How do you say it? Hong Shao Rou. Hong Shao Rou. Yeah. Hong means red, Shao means roasted, Rou means meat. Red roasted meat, which pretty much is what this is. Smells good, right? Go for it. It's too big, guy. Oh, it melts so well. And this pork belly, mm -hmm. you won't find it in any mainstream grocery store in the USA. You have to go to an Asian market. Here, if you get any kind of pork belly, it's gonna be cured bacon, and you can't get something unseasoned. Oh, also, I don't think people in the US, a lot of people anyway, I don't think they enjoy the pork fat. That, like soft ones. You know, people will love the bacon, it's cured, it's chewy, the fat is chewy, but here the fat melts, and you want it to melt. It's so delicious. Try the egg. What do you call the, so I always call it like a soy sauce egg. What it's a it? lu dan, basically means it's, it's a marinated braised egg. It's not a tea egg, there's, there's a difference. How good is that egg? I don't that. This sauce that's on here, it's a little sweet, it's a little savory. It tastes like the pork juices have just really cooked down and reduced and made this thick, delicious sauce. And then that permeates the egg on the white and it just soaks up that flavor. It's, yeah. it's so good. Okay, try the tomatoes and egg. This is every single Chinese person's favorite dish in the world, check that. Oh, you just oh. throw that right in the kanji, oh, huh? Oh, throw it right in the kanji, it's fine. Don't worry about it. This usually goes better on rice, but kanji is fine. All right, it's like scrambled eggs with tomato. Let's go for it. Does it feel like your Asian grandma just hugged you? <laughs> it's interesting because for you, mm -hmm. this creates a feeling of familiarity mm -hmm. and, and something you've tasted many times before. Yeah. And for me, I'm trying to figure it out. How's it feel to have a grandma, Asian grandma hug you for the first time ever? I like it. You like you it? Know, even my own grandma, I don't think she hugged me that much. No, yeah. that's the Asian grandma's hug right there. There you go. I have a pig trotter. I'm gonna put it. I like this. Yeah. The way it's broken, it's like this pig had a gambling debt, <laughs> and some bookies just took him behind the barn and broke his legs. Mm. Mm. You like that hit of umami? Now, is that like a Chinese five spice? You think? Chinese five spice is definitely used. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of soy sauce. Mm -hmm. um, definitely some sugar. Me at age 12 mm -hmm. would not appreciate this at all. Mm. But were you growing up with stuff like this? Mm-hmm. Every Chinese kid before the age of 10 had a pig trot in his mouth or her mouth. Yeah. Yeah, that's just the way it goes. Yeah, I just didn't grow up with it. And so it's so different. It took me time in my 20s and 30s to really come to appreciate these types of textures, and now I love it. You know what's so great about this? If you like meat, it has it. If you like fat, it has mm -hmm. it. If you like little gelatinous tendon collagen, it has it. The tendon, like that. So whenever I get pho, yeah. my favorite cut it's tender, because I love the texture. Yes. And that's what that is. It's a little bit gelatinous, but it's got a little bit of density to it, so you can really rip through it with your yeah. teeth. Awesome. And plus, like, that's one of those dishes that the more you chew, you see that, the more the flavor profile builds and releases. That's what I love about it. Like Gushers. Is that a, was, that a, was that a Minnesota traditional dish? Gushers? <laughs> yeah, you had that when you were a kid. <laughs> I did have that. You know what? I, I saw my friends have that. Because I mean, I have Asian parents, they would never buy me like fruit roll ups or gushers. So I see my Western friends roll out a sheet of like whatever it is. I don't even know what it was. I'm just like, oh, I want that because it comes in a different shape. And then, I, and then when gushers came out, they're like, you'll put this in your mouth and it's just the most exciting thing ever. I'm like, what? Well, like a tea egg? And then it was this gushering, chewy fruit. Yeah, it's just sugar juice. Yeah. Let's try this traditional Taiwanese uh, egg omelet. Oh, so you've had something like this before? Yeah, but I never had a traditional Taiwanese oh, one. Me. Thank you. So I am kind of intrigued by it. Yeah, I think I've probably had something similar to this in Taiwan. Delicious. Mm. Wow. Sometimes for me, the worst thing you put in an omelet is that super processed ham and yeah. then super processed cheese, because yeah. that's all it tastes like is processed crap. Yeah. This is all in one direction, and it's just very oniony. Did you just give a shout out to One Direction? <laughs> I did. Oh. And, it, and it must be about 98 degrees, it's very hot. Yeah, thanks for that. And uh, is it in sync with your taste buds? Yes. <laughs> Hold on, I, I'm trying to think of more. Come on, we're running out you of point me. <laughs> You got me. I think the also the awesome thing is they, there's some radish in here. You, you taste that, that the right? crunchy radish? I did not. But I believe you. It's also really meaty too. This is 100% musket if you come here. Okay. We're, we're on to your favorite dish, the, the, the jellyfish. Okay, so I did a whole video about jellyfish in Vietnam. Okay. Most of the jellyfish caught in Vietnam, and they catch tons of it, and they send it almost all to China. Uh -huh. So 
So folks there love it. Mm -hmm. Every time I tried it, in every different form, it just felt and tasted the same. It does not absorb flavor. It, it always just was kind of hard to chew through. The texture didn't change. Like Really? Nothing you did to it changed. Check out how we do it. Right, I'm very excited to try it. Oh, you don't like it. No, that's good. Oh. You know, it's almost like a, um, oh, what do you call the Korean noodle? Japchae. Oh, because it has sesame oil. Right? It has sesame oil and also a lot of ginger. There's no fishiness, gaminess to this whatsoever. No. It's crunchy. Super Despite crunchy. how jellyfish look, it's super crunchy. And you know you know how like you, when people get steamed by a jellyfish, they just like scream and run off? I want to take it and cook it. All right, this is also my favorite, twice cooked pork. This is something you never had before either, right? Mm. This is more of a Sichuanese dish, uh, but this is more of your cured pork belly and chase it with some spicy potatoes, which my uh, my uh, Western friends call Chinese French fries. Okay, got it. I would never call it that. Thank you. Maybe hash browns? Just don't. Just no? Don't. It doesn't look like a French fry at all. Stop. All right. Stop. How good is that? It's so good. There's something sweet in the mm -hmm. sauce. It's spicy. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. Buddy, wow. you got to try this. Ever tried this before? All right. This looks like the midsection of a fish. Am I correct? Do you know what this fish is? Um... No. It's called a hair tail fish. It is one of the most traditional and popular fish in China. Look at this. Once you peel it apart, and then the middle has like a, a spine. Once you get rid of all this, it's pretty much pure meat. And pretty much not that many bones? Okay, it has bones on the side right here. Just be careful of that. Okay. And then I'm gonna give you my favorite part. I'm just giving you the best stuff today. Here, this is my favorite part. Gnaw on this like a rib. Okay. Just uh, take the two sides off. And, oh, there's a lot of bones no, in no, here. No, no, here's what you do, here's what you do. Do I, do I eat take them? It? Yeah. No, don't eat the bones, don't eat the bones. And just eat from the side. Oh. Ah, okay. Yeah. Mmm. Chinese, this is called dai yu. That's really good. There's no little bones in the meat. As long as you get the big bones out, it eats like a filet. Yeah, you have to be really smart to eat this. Because you could easily do it wrong. Mm -hmm. And when I was when I lived in Korea, mm -hmm. I, I always hated the small fish because they would have so many bones. But I think part of the problem is I didn't know how to eat it properly. Wow, so this is like the, the tenderloin of the fish. Yeah. If there was such a thing. Right. So the spine just comes out so easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I bet somebody in back could fry this up and we could eat this too. Right. And then this is just a pure meat log right oh. here. Try that. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> to me though, mm -hmm. that's a drinking food. I don't drink, so I'll trust you on that. All right, so what are we trying now? Seaweed? Try the seaweed. Oh, it's so good. We usually cook it with a little vinegar, a little chilies. Mm. How do you like that? That's really good. Is that the best way you ever had seaweed? That is some of the best seaweed I've ever had, yeah. The texture of seaweed is so incredible, mm -hmm. and uh, you just have to know how to prepare it, or find someone who knows how to prepare it, or come here. It's so crunchy and nice. Little garlic, little chilies, perfect. We gotta eat up because uh, we gotta have a full stomach before we go to the last place. Because that's where you, you can't explode a solid stomach unless it's full. So we're gonna eat up <laughs> and we got another place to go to. We're gonna eat up there. Then the explosion happens. <sighs> Let's do it. Okay, location number two. Now, have you ever had Xi'an food before? No. Is that like General Tao's chicken? I'm sorry. I'm, I, I should have done that. Can you cut that out, actually? Good day to you, sir. All right, but like orange chicken? 
I said good day. Sesame chicken. Cream cheese wontons. All right, I'm making fun of that type of person, but I'm not, that's not me, I'm cultured. Is, is, is that bandana too tight on your head? <laughs> it's cutting off the circulation, <laughs> yeah. All right, Xi'an food, uh, it's a lot of noodles, it's a lot of buns, because we, we were from the north. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of heavy spices, a lot of chilies, a lot of sour vinegar stuff. Is it cold there? It's cold there, in the winter, real yeah. winters. Yes. Because what's really interesting about China is it's so huge, yeah. and even uh, there's such a range of uh, longitude yeah. that there's uh, places that are hot all year, yeah. and then there's places with intense winters, yeah. and then I'm guessing you would want more energy-packed food for those yes. like, cold places. You like want things that food. are hearty, yeah. that are spicy, because you want to keep warm. Because when I lived there, it was a long time ago, Like we didn't have heat in our apartments. So I lived by every day going home, I'm stuffing, chili filled noodles down my throat. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards I feel good. I don't need mm. a jack when I go outside. That is what we love. Heavy flavors, a lot of meat, a lot of noodles. Three most popular Xi'an dishes sitting in front of us. Have you had anything like this before? Okay, right, that looks like noodles. Yes. Uh, are these rice noodles? These are not. These no. are uh, these are actually made with flour. Hmm. But you know how to make this? You have to literally wash dough mm -hmm. until like your your water is concentrated with like excess flour. Uh -huh. And then you steam it and it becomes these noodles. Oh. This is the number one most popular item to get. This is also really popular. This is called lamb pita soup. So there's little pita bits in there that's cooked into the soup with lamb. And woodier mushroom? Woodier mushroom. Got some scallions, some noodles. Oh, that looks really good. Yeah. And you eat it with pickled garlic. So you don't put hot oil in there. You just put garlic chilies in there. Can I smell this? Yeah, smell it. Just don't like, don't. I was going to say don't snort it. No, I don't. Smell it. This is how I smell stuff especially in LA. That's what, it smells good, it's super fresh. I'm gonna add all of it, okay? And this is my pride and joy. This is called, guess the name of this. Um, what, what does it look like to you? A uh, bowl of chicken. Uh, what bowl of chicken? Big bowl of chicken? Exactly! Yes. Is that big right? bowl of chicken! <laughs> <laughs> That's the real name, the That's translation. The a big, well, actually, they call it big plate of chicken. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. I didn't even recognize that as chicken at first. That right. sauce is so dark. Are right, you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Surprise, surprise for you, my friend. Okay, yeah. Is this noodles? What surprise, is Surprise, surprise. Oh. Noodles inside these the are like chicken. big sheets of noodles. Biang Biang noodles. Have you ever had these noodles before? It looks like lasagna noodles. Hand cold <laughs> noodles. Giant bell sized noodles inside the chicken. Wow, those are awesome. And then you cover it with the sauce and the chicken. There's potatoes in here and there's onions. So how many people should this feed? One. <laughs> so this is the best thing here. I always get this here. But before we get to this, let's try the liang pi because I want you to try this. Choppy sticks? Chop sticks for you. By the way, Thank you. fork or chopsticks, what's your preference? I prefer chopsticks. Okay. Do you know why I like chopsticks? Why? First of all, did you know Chinese also invented the fork? Is that right? Yeah, but we chose chopsticks over thousands of years. Wow. Secondly, if that's, you ever go- That's the ultimate flex. Like we created yeah. something even more effective and didn't want to use it. Right. And then the second reason is, <laughs> if you're ever in the wild, right? You need some utensils, two branches. That's right all here. you need. Here, try this. All right. Plate me up. That looks go. awesome. Yeah. Wow. So just a really broad, wide noodle. Oh, smells good. It's really cold, a little spicy, mm -hmm. but not too spicy. Uh -huh. I was looking at you with like this, this anticipation that you were gonna love this. The first words out of your mouth was, it's, it's cold. cold. I'm sorry. Thank, thank mm -hmm. you, It's yes, it's cold. I enjoy it, mm -hmm. but I'm like, what's going on in there? There's, is there something fermented in here? No. no. First of all, notice how chewy this is, right? Yes. So chewy, so elastic. -y. Secondly, a little vinegar in here, a little sesame paste, that's where you get the creaminess from. Oh, the from. paste. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something that's almost a little chalky. Have a gluten, my friend. A, a, a pure gluten. A gluten. Gluten. How good is that gluten? Mmm. It's quite a gluten. <laughs> that's, yeah, it's you called like it? a gluten? No, it is gluten. It's literally a piece of gluten. Oh, I'm gonna sneak that into my brother's food. You won't be able to go to work for a week. <laughs> the flavors, it's not like what we just had. It's a little no. different from what we just had because no. the, the flavors are a little bit more understated. No, I like the texture. I think elastic is a good word to describe uh, yeah. these noodles. Well, let me give you some of this. This is uh, lamb pita soup. Uh, this is another very traditional dish. Let me give it to you in the bowl here. Have some lamb. Are you a lamb lover or no? Is oh, it, yeah, yeah, I like yeah? lamb. Okay. 
Some people is a little too gamey for them. No, I like the game. There you go. <clears throat> Thank you. They're pieces of pita. That's bread? That's bread. I don't, yeah. I've never seen a dish like this. Yeah, it's gonna be, try the texture. Mm. Oh, you know what? Mm -hmm. This reminds me of Uzbekistan. <laughs> oh, you been to Uzbekistan too? Yeah. Did you go? <laughs> I, did. I, went, I went. Dude, everybody went. Come yeah. on. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mm. The meat yeah. is so tender. Yeah. But you know, the, the star of this is really the pita. That's what Xi'an people love. Mm -hmm. So like, you, if you go to Xi'an, they, they don't give it to you like this. They give it to you like an like a actual bread. You have to kind of make it into the little pieces yourself with your hands. So it's like a workout before you eat. The, yeah, so I've never had any Chinese food mm -hmm. with lamb mm -hmm. and with these kind of like really bold, yeah. hearty flavors. You get a garlic and then you eat that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Eat that. Mm -hmm. mm. You like that? I like that a lot. Is this on the Silk Trail, the Silk Road? Yeah. Because, yeah, the Silk Road has a completely different yeah. kind of culinary identity, especially as you go from nation to nation. Yeah. And Uzbekistan is also on the Silk Road. I don't have a better comparison, but it just reminds me of yeah. those it, it, strong flavors I had there. Yeah. And it, it doesn't taste at all like any Chinese food I've ever no, had. No, this is very unique because China also has a lot of uh, Uyghurs. They cook a lot of lamb, mm -hmm. so this is a this is a dish that a lot of Uyghurs will, will cook as well. Uncle Roger does not recognize those people. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, buddy. Try this. <laughs> right. So these, what do you call these big flat noodles? Just they're called noodle? biang biang noodles. You know why biang they're biang. called biang biang noodles? No. Because when they are made, they're slapped on the counter and it makes this biang biang sound. Mm. Throw in a bowl oh. and have a piece of chicken. Let me get you a nice yeah, saucy one. All the chicken, one. is it just, it's nice. hacked up randomly, right? So there's yeah. just random bones So watch in there. out, watch out for the bones. Can I get this piece right here? Yeah, get the piece. Look at that. This is just straight carbs with a nice layer of sauce on the outside. Enjoy it. Mmm. It's sticky. Mm -hmm. It's like, you're going to hate this, but it's like when you get lasagna and two. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I mean, I get lasagna, I got fettuccine. Any other dishes you want to compare this to that they make at the Olive Garden? <laughs> <laughs> no. I just, for the people watching who haven't had real Chinese food, I just thought it'd be a good comparison. No, it is. I'm, I'm just teasing you. Like when you have two pieces of lasagna yeah. that are stuffed together, they've kind of caked together. Okay, here's the thing. And it's really carby. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop you right there. Uh-huh. It's caked together because we kind of let this sit a little bit. Mm. I'm gonna give you the, the noodles that, that's kind of more fresh because it's not supposed to be stuck together. All right, so this is in its original form. It's supposed to be a noodle. It's not supposed to be stuck together. Here, okay. try this out. Mm. Feel that texture? Mm -hmm. Feel that bounciness? Doesn't it feel like this noodle's been like oh. working at a trampoline park? Right, it's so bouncy. Yeah. If I finished a marathon, I'd want to break through one of those. I got a recipe for this. If you guys want to try and make it at home, I'll put the link down below. You can make it at home too. This is not hard to make, but it's one, it is my favorite noodle in the world. But you have to make this from scratch, right? Yeah, it's easy. You it's don't find, hard. there's no box. Like for example, if you had bow tie pasta. No, no, there's no box like this. No. no, okay. You got it, without the stretchiness, without your hand making a stretch, it will not stretch. Mm. All right, last meal of the day. Are you ready to be hurt? By the killer noodle. I'm, yeah, I'm very excited. It's yeah. uh, it's gonna be spicy. I, I hope so. So it's not just gonna be spicy. It's gonna be spicy and numbing. No, okay, but then it can't hurt you. What do you mean it can't hurt you? Okay, it cancels each other out. Usually, no, it okay, doesn't. No, it makes listen, it worse. Listen, let me listen to this logic. Spice, painful. Yeah. Numbing, reduces pain. What do you do when you go to the dentist? You get it numbed up. It's like uh, Novocaine. In a weird way, that doesn't make sense. Yes. But this, that's not what these noodles do. They, they, they make you numb in a bad way and they burn you in a bad way. Or actually in a good way, in a delicious way, but also painful. Why? He's like trying to hurt me and he's trying to sell the thread. Why, why aren't fun. you afraid? This, you should be afraid right now. Oh, is, oh, like for the video, for the it's, drama? It's called Killer Noodle. This noodle is supposed to be the spiciest in Los Angeles. And it's, you can adjust your spice level and the numb level. We're going all out. We're going full and full. The scale, is the scale one through five? I think so. And are you, so you're going five and five? Five and five. You're not even gonna go off menu until like a 10? You want a 10? I bet there's an off menu option. 
We can ask him. Do you want to go off menu? Yeah, we'll just, we'll just tell him the spiciest thing can make it. Yeah, whatever but you do. Do you want this to be um, not edible though? I want it to taste good and be spicy. Okay, so we'll see what they think is the perfect balance of that. Mm. And we'll, we'll have them bring it. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. All right, so are you ready for this? Yeah. This is a dry uh, ramen noodle with um, just tons of peppercorn. Uh, the peppercorn is actually mainly mixed with ghost peppers. So we asked for level six, which is, this is the max you, you, you can do for, for ramen. Uh, What's the spiciest chili you had so far in, in um, your whole life? So yeah, the ghost pepper. I had ghost peppers in India, uh -huh. where they come from, yeah. and that's it. That's it. Uh, I did one that's crazy. I, I told you, right? I did the Carolina Reaper uh, oh, curry that challenge. Yet. That was, I'll link it below, guys. That was the worst week of my life. Remember before how I was excited? Yeah. Not anymore. I'm, I'm here. I'm smelling it. It just, the pepper itself is. Does it smell like terror? Yeah, it's, it smells brutal. Yeah. It's borderline not food. No offense to the person watching Well, this I mean, it looks, I mean. I, made it, but. Uh, I think it tastes pretty good. I did. Last time I had it, I was like, well, it tastes pretty good. The, there's just so much spice for the amount of ramen. Yeah. It's, there's a ball, is that peppercorn? No, that's a bowl of meat. I thought this was an ice cream scoop of peppercorn. <laughs> that would be amazing. All right, we destroyed it. We mixed everything together. Yeah. So it's really, I don't know, it seems like a chili oil almost. <laughs> <laughs> don't smell it. Don't. Was that real? That was real. That, that reaction? Oh, you got some nice nostrils. Yeah. What have you been snorting up there? I'm very competitive. <laughs> I've lost all sensation in my nostrils. It's LA. Ugh, you can't bother me. I'm good. You know what's happening to me right now? Sometimes when you smell spicy food, your mouth automatically salivates. Yeah. My, I can't stop salivating because yeah. it's it just smells it, so spicy. It also spicy. smells good. I am sure kinda of excited yeah. to eat this. It does. Alright. Cheers, friend. Enough talk. Mm -hmm. My one and only goal mm -hmm. is to keep my composure <clears throat> while eating with Mike Chen. World famous for taking down chili oil, spices, <clears throat> chilies, things of that nature. If I can hold my own with you, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the top of the top. I'm, well, a, I'm a spice lord, as they say. So are there such one um, peppercorns in here? Yeah, there is. I love that. Yeah. I've had such one hot pot before. Mm -hmm. Freaking love it. Yeah. This is this too much uh, numbiness for you right now. How do you mm -hmm. feel? I feel in the middle between numbing and pain. <laughs> I feel I'm detoxifying. I'm starting to sweat a little bit. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why you got your bandana on. You're good. How do you feel? I feel pretty good. All right. Let's keep going. I like the flavor. I like the noodles. They have a nice chew mm -hmm. on those noodles. Yeah, nice thick ramen noodle, like mm -hmm. very weedy thick noodle. Mm -hmm. The thing about the peppercorns, the more you eat it, it has almost like a met metallic flavor in your mouth. That's enjoyable. I don't know how to explain it. It's, oh, you know what it's like? What? It's like when you have a nine volt battery and mm -hmm. you put it on your tongue. This tastes like electricity. Please, nobody put nine volt batteries on your tongue. Can I make a suggestion? I think we get a spoon uh -huh. like this, uh -huh. full of meat and spices yeah. and juice. Let's do it. And nuts and take it down. Woo! I like Enough where your mind noodles. is hit it. Let's do it. Here we go. Mmm. It's pretty flavorful. Mm -hmm. The almonds kind of sweet. Bring a nice sweetness to it. Do this. <clears throat> just just don't do anything. Mm -hmm. Just be quiet. Mm -hmm. Five seconds. I feel like ants are walking around in my mouth. <clears throat> I feel like my mouth is like electrified. Mm -hmm. Like electricity like is the battery. moving through my mouth. Yeah. You're, you're you know, reminded you know of the of the nine volt battery. I've, I've never had that much numbing really? sensation in my life. You never been into a peppercorn? I uh, no, not directly. And I've I've had I thought I've had such one hot pot, but I've never had this <sighs> much direct contact with the peppercorns. Whoa, it feels so cool. <laughs> That's like a whole new sensation for me. I love that. Really? Wow. I'm just gonna have like some snot rolled up my face pretty soon. <sighs> I like it. I'm. Oh, are you gonna keep eating it? Yeah. Oh boy. Come on, let's do it. I feel like I'm wrapped in a warm blanket. 
on a hot day in hell. It's very nice. <laughs> this is a great dish to eat in the winter. We don't have heat. <laughs> no, yeah, no kidding. Um, you know, a lot of people, mm -hmm. they know Mark, they know Trevor, they know me, they know you. Of us four, who do you think handles spice the best? I'm probably, guessing Mark. I was gonna say, it's probably between you and Mark. Mark and I have done some spicy stuff, but you get trained in Thailand. Yeah, Thailand like has that, really spicy food. Vietnam does not, that's where I live. And there's like no air conditioning. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you keep eating. Why do you keep eating? We gotta finish it. It's giving me a little bit of a headache. That's oh. just the chili. You gotta push back that. Dude, my mouth feels crazy. It's like TV static. Do you feel like? It's like my mouth fell asleep. You know, like when your foot falls asleep? Uh-huh. I feel like my mouth fell asleep. Has it moved up from a nine volt battery to like a 12 volt? Yeah, it's like a car battery now. It's good to sweat every once in a while without mm -hmm. going to the gym. Mm -hmm. We're basically burning calories. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you. Do you feel like we burn some calories down there? Yeah, it's basically net zero. It's like eating celery. I see sweat coming down despite the banana. Uh -huh. Is your banana wet right now? Uh-huh, uh you wanna touch it? I don't know. Yeah, dude, it's damp. <laughs> oh, I want to die. <laughs> I've never had this sensation in my life. I got the high. I've got a high from the spice right uh -huh. now. Oh my God, you could ask me my social security. You could ask me my social insecurity. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you all the answers. Last bite right here. Yeah. Good job. Boom. Is that the spiciest thing you've ever had in your life? No. No? What's spicier? These stupid wings I had in New Orleans. All right, drink your, drink your tea. Oh no, are you sure? Is it gonna make the pain go away? You want the pain to go away? No, I wanna live in this moment forever. Uh, so, <laughs> I just wanna keep like feeling it. It feels so weird. Did you know, if you eat something too spicy, it messes with your equilibrium. Mm. Like, after I did the Carolina Reaper thing, I couldn't stand up. Because mm -hmm. I stand up, my blood pressure is like uh, messed up. I feel faint. So I was crawling to the bathroom for the next few days. <laughs> Did you like the noodles? I like them. Uh huh. Yeah, I wouldn't do this every day. Uh huh. And I'm definitely gonna regret it. Mm -hmm. But this was this was great fun. So what I like about this, I don't think they put anything fake in here. Like, no. uh, excuse me, like they haven't. Uh, did I just uh, burn your finger? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you see the flame? Yeah, I saw the flame come out. There's no chili extract, yeah. I just asked. Everything's natural. Yeah. And so that's why, that's where it's supposed to be. Because yeah. it hurts you, but it hurts you as nature intended. So what I mean is this, the ghost pepper is the hottest chili that God created. Uh -huh. And then man mm -hmm. did a bunch of weird breeding yeah. in the back room with some spotlights mm -hmm. and a camera. Mm -hmm. And then somehow he got the Carolina Reaper. Yeah. Unnatural, <laughs> but very, very hot. Yes. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And so, this is what we're supposed to be able to tolerate mm -hmm. as humans, and then people have just taken it way too far. Yeah. But I like this. You like this? Yeah. Okay, well, and I'm, I'm glad you like it because we got a second bowl coming up. <laughs> I'm out of With space. a soup. Are you serious right now? Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see your face. I thought we were going to take That like, was pure panic. I thought we were going to take two bites. Like, your eyes were just ball. You're, you're just, like, uh, if that was true, would you have like just died it right in front of the bowl of soup? I, no, I would have done it. You would have done it? Yeah. Okay. Let's Anything for you, Mike Chen. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Well, that's it, man. Thank you for being such a good sport today. I, I, I get, got you some comfort food and I tried to destroy you a little bit. Yeah, that was fun. So I feel like two people who's been through comfort and pain mm -hmm. can really build a strong friendship. Yes, because anytime you go through something difficult yeah. with someone else, it brings you closer. It does. It's like uh, people who you know go to war together, yeah. or eat spicy food together. Basically, the same. Or Russia fraternity, same, yeah, yeah, similar stuff like that. Really fun doing this with you today. Yeah, me too. Um, I think it's long overdue, and uh, thanks for uh, again being such a good sport. And, and, I didn't have to do anything. I just showed you brought me around, and you <clears throat> treated me to like three lunches in a row. Hey, all in a row. I'm, I'm glad you liked everything and you ate everything. Absolutely. So uh, again, really good to hang out with you here in Los Angeles. Who would have thought you would be in Los Angeles? This is where we hang out. We're a couple of Los Angelinos over here. Oh, Big Hollywood types, us guys, right? So who do people say you look like? Um, Kanye West. Well, people say I look like that guy from the Rush Hour movies. I mean, I Google Chris Tucker, but yeah, I don't, I don't see, see it. it. Uh -uh. I don't see it. Huh. Hold on, say, do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? A little bit. Do I? Mm. 
Yeah. Maybe it's the hair. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, buddy, uh, so fun hanging out with you guys. Check him out, Best Ever Food Review Show. I'll put the link down below for you. Well, you can check Mike out on my channel too, because we did another we video did there. We did do a collab there, absolutely. All right, guys, that's always all the plays we're into. Listen down below for you. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later. Oh, peace.